What's up, y'all? Welcome back to part two. I'm so happy you're here. Let's dive in where we left off. I think what, what, what motivates me to talk about deconstruction in such ways is because I see, you know, I've been dealing with people doing this for so many years now. And one of the things I see happening is people, uh, I think humans naturally gravitate towards something that feels secure and, you know, some ideas that gives their mind some sense of peace. Mm. And so what I see is when people start questioning their uh, Christian beliefs, um, some maybe go into a more progressive form of Christianity or a more progressive church or an affirming church, or, you know, they, they change their theology um, or they might change the religion. They might go over into Buddhism or yoga or new age or Wicca or, yeah. <laughs> or atheism or science, you know, and, and, and then um, they, they build a whole other structure there that, I see it happen over and over again that they eventually have to deconstruct as well. Mm -hmm. So my, my opinion is if we get rid of all the clutter and we deconstruct, tear away all the perif um, superfluous stuff, um, leave it that way. Mm. Like just enjoy the space and, and see what happens. That's my advice. I like that though. Hmm. That sounds good too. But that's where a lot of see, um, the problem with love uh, in the minds of many people is that there's so many doors you got to walk through or hoops you got to jump through or rules you got to follow or, you know, conditions you got to meet. But we know even from Jesus who said, you know, the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. The sun shines on the just and the unjust alike. The gravity pulls everybody and it's indiscriminate. And that's what love is. Love is indiscriminate. But you need space for that. If you're if you're bound up with rules and who's in and who's out and who's sacred and who's secular and who's divine and who's devil and who's you know all this stuff, like your your love isn't going to happen. So I think mm. love happens in a spacious place. You know that's so that's true. Cool. I was I was listening to Roar and he said that same thing. He's like the second that your love puts you against somebody else, then you got to like question that love. Yeah. Like you really do because now yeah. it's not love it's transitioning into an ideology and it's mm -hmm. you think this way i think this way yeah and i've always thought with christians love is synonymous with with judgment somehow they feel that by judging that they are loving yet the people that are being judged you ask them and they're like this ain't love but anytime I will call somebody out, like, bruh, like, why are you judging? Oh, because the Bible calls us to judge. Right. I'm like, first of all, it says judge righteously. And I don't think you're acting righteous right now. You're going to say you're being righteous because yeah. You're, yeah. you're on a mission from God to tell people they're going to hell. But you're not acting righteous. And this is not love. And I've found it now. I'm like, man, I think the sexiest thing about my newfound christianity is that i no longer think i'm right about anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like being wrong is not even scary anymore whereas before like you said there was this there was this desire to if i wasn't right then that means i have to question everything yeah, like, that, yeah. what do i stand on if i'm not right yeah and that's a scary thought for a lot of people like being wrong yeah. or just not knowing like that's scary. What's that song John Bellion sings? Have you ever heard of John Bellion, David? Uh, it rings a bell. John Bellion is one of our favorite artists. He's super dope, and um, um, he has a he has a song called "Maybe I Don't Know." Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's literally the hook. It's just like, maybe I don't know, <laughs> maybe I don't know. And, I'm, and he's like, Perfect. I'm like, man, I've never had a song hit me so hard. Yeah. And yeah. and the second half is, but maybe that's okay. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, it is okay not to know everything. It really is. That's one of my books I titled uh, Questions Are the Answer, because I really do believe questions are a way to wisdom Ooh. instead of mm. answers, you know. Um, yeah. It's like somebody said recently uh, something about 
answers that you can questions are better. It's better to uh, be able to question the answers than not being able to answer the question, something like that, where, you, you know, if you're not allowed to question an the answer, then there's something definitely wrong. That's why I said mm. um, earlier that, um, you know, deconstruction needs to take us as far down as we can go. Mm. It's like the matrix, you know, how far down the rabbit yeah. hole are you willing to go? And uh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's so good. I know I was, man, there's so many images for me. Uh, it was funny when I was really going through it, like when I was really tearing things apart and that painful process uh, yeah. where it, everything just hurts, you know? Yeah. Uh, I remember thinking, wow, it feels like I've fallen down so far. Like at one point it felt like I was standing on this sort of platform physically, literally in a way, uh, but then also like symbolically. And then it felt like I got to this place where I'm like laying on my back in the basement of my own soul. Mm. And I'm just like, there's, I can't go lower than this. And in a lot of ways, I feel like this is where life actually begins. Right. It's here. It's on the bottom where you can't go any lower yeah. where now all of a sudden this is where we start. Welcome to the beginning. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, great. that's good imagery too. be the basement of my soul. Sheesh. Yeah. What yeah. does that look yeah. like? That's crazy. Where it's like, it's just, it's just stripping down, getting all down there. Uh, and it's for me because it was, it was a crazy process. Cause I wasn't just dealing with church hurt, which is already enough. I'm dealing with grief, uh, from losing my grandmother. And then I'm, I'm grieving almost my own death in a way of that whole thing of who I thought I was going to be, right? who everyone else thought I was going to be. And now I'm realizing who I actually am. Yeah. And so all three of these things are coming together. And it just was like, whoa. And I'm just laying there and I'm like, well, I can't go any lower. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff around me right now. So yeah, and I've been able to build from there. Um, cool. I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask you about some of your art. I, I think like, it's absolutely amazing. And I'm, I was trying to earlier remember the first time I started following you on Instagram. And I want to say it was like a year and a half to two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, you know, it's like one of those things where some mutuals follow each other mm -hmm. and I, uh, saw you on explore page and I don't remember what cartoon, but I saw it and goes, Oh, this looks interesting. And so, you know, you click on it and then all of a sudden you visit the person's page. Um, but recently there was something that was on your page. I think it's pinned and it is your picture of the narrow way. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I love this piece because there's so many things that come to mind. And I think even you said like in the post, you're like, this is the, and it's a picture of what looks like Jesus kind of like crawling out of this cross. Yeah. And you're like, I'm not even going to try and explain. Um, what was like, what was some of the inspiration behind that? I know that's like technically not explaining, but I would love to hear just kind of some of the thoughts behind it because that image is so, it's so provoking, first off, um, because most of the images that you see, Jesus is on the cross. Right. And here you have a Jesus who's like going through the cross. Like he's not on it. He's not pinned, but he's crawling through. Yeah, so it's it's interesting that you 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 think it's Jesus, um, it, that it, and for you it can be. Uh, I've had oh. a, a um, that's me, um, escaping from religion, or I've had women say, oh. can you do a female version," because mm. um, yeah. that, that's me, or you know, or some people saying, you know, the narrow way is, I called it the narrow way because the narrow way is cross, uh -huh. let's say, but I'll tell you how things happen creatively. I don't sit down and, and manufacture an image. Like it mm -hmm. comes to me. So I'll just be sitting yeah. there and totally out of the blue, that image comes to my mind, just pops in my head. And I got to draw it. And so I, I sit down and draw it and it's, it's powerful to me. It moves me. It means something to me. And, um, I, 
decide to share it and, and it moves other people. And uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's how a lot of my work happens. It's the same with my Sophia drawings um, or timber where I never planned it. It just mm -hmm. started happening. I just started drawing and they just sort of came out kind of like, what do they call it? Subconscious uh, stream or flow. And uh, yeah. And, you know, for all 62 images and the meditation. So it's really, really that kind of a profound experience when we surrender to what's going on deep inside of us and let it come through somehow, whether it's in poetry or writing or uh, music or painting or cartoons or, you know, relationships, whatever your art form. I believe everybody's creative in some way. And uh, just to, you know, express yourself without m forcing it to go through your rational brain, um, right. mm -hmm. seek approval or to make sure it's good or whatever. Just like the, it's like a lot of writers say, when you write your first draft, don't think about editing it or anything. Just bleh, just get it out there. Right. And, mm -hmm. And so that's what a lot of my art is. I just get over here to my um, drafting table and I start. And when I'm finished, I'm finished. Yeah, I'm I love the one with the Jesus in the in the sleeping bag as his halo. <laughs> oh yeah. That's so dope to me. And then <laughs> the one that I wanted to ask you about, which I was trying to figure out what all of them everything meant, which I kind of want to hear the story to this too, the the puzzle of love. Right. Um, because I know you give us you told you told a story on your Instagram about meeting a trans person that was uh felt super lonely because they weren't mm. they were kind of like disowned by every everything that they knew. And right. so at what point or have you always felt this open or accepting about um that community? On a personal level, yeah. Like I've I've known gay people uh, ever since I was a teenager. Um, I met that trans person when I was in my young 20s and the trans woman. And, uh, you know, being a pastor of a church, I've had different people come to me confessing, you know, th that they're gay or, or trans or attracted to, you know, bi bisexual, whatever, you know. And something happened to me when I was very young where um, somebody I love very much, um, a friend, her family was breaking up. It was a Christian family. Um, her mom and dad were going through a very nasty divorce, uh, just very cruel, bitter. And she was like, how can there be a God? Mm -hmm. That's where, what her attitude was. And I totally felt her like I just totally felt her grief and confusion and anger and disappointment and my one of my thoughts was how why would God punish somebody who's going through so much and uh, and of course they're going to doubt you know and 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 I kind of carried that attitude everywhere from from then on where when people are hurting or marginalized or persecuted or, you know, bullied or rejected or invalidated or uh, ridiculed or whatever, why? That doesn't make sense in a world of love to me. That just does not make sense. And why would anybody punish them? Like, like how, how that doesn't even make sense. Just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. But I was in a system that thinks differently, right? Like I've, I've said earlier, that yeah. I can be one way and the system can be another. And, uh, you know, I was, I was a part of the vineyard movement here up in Canada. And um, it, I, I, there were some gay people coming to my church, even though we weren't open, the, you know, the vineyard wasn't openly affirming or whatever, even welcoming. And, uh, but they knew I was, so they were coming to the church. And when I left the ministry though, I knew the church, the vineyard was struggling with this. And um, years after I left, they eventually 
through a series of meetings, decided to not be affirming. So I was glad I was gone by then. Mm. Um, but I think a lot of it behind it wasn't just theological. It was like, there's too many of us who are struggling with it. And if we allowed gay people in uh, and were, became affirming, it would, uh, too many people would leave and, and we would, mm. um, no, we'd, we'd go bankrupt. And so, you know, that, that's, I think, what happens. Uh, so I was, here I was affirming, but in uh, maybe an unfriendly system. And I was constantly having to navigate, you know, the weirdness of that. So. So, man, so even back when it was not a popular thing to be affirming or did it, I don't even know if it had that term back then when you were, when you were doing it. No, 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 you're right. But I struggled. I, because I, I, I couldn't figure out because everything I'd been taught and everything I was mm -hmm. told the Bible said um, and the culture I was in, the religious culture I was in, saying it's wrong and sinful. Meanwhile, I thought, well, how, why would, you know, if this is who somebody is, why would God punish that? Like, I couldn't understand. So I wasn't willing to say you're all full of, you know, bull poop. You can say shit. That's okay. <laughs> you're all full of bullshit. You're all full of shit. I couldn't do that because I was a part of that and it was a struggle. Right. And I, I do remember thinking, love the sinner, hate the sin yeah. the stuff and trying to figure it out, which doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. Just trying to figure it out until I realized I had a profound sort of epiphany moment, realizing that we're all one. We're all connected at a deep and fundamental level. You do you, I do me. You know, we figure this out together and sort of the, the conflict evaporated then. But yeah, I read I, I just finished reading a book um, uh, where the, the person talks about research that shows that people who read fiction um, develop greater uh, sense of empathy for other people because they when they're reading fiction, they're actually in the head and in the heart and, you know, inside the life of another person. And they actually learn how other people can feel and think and struggle. Yeah. And they walk a mile in their shoes, so to speak. And um, I thought, wow, that that's cool. And I hope my cartoons do the yeah. same thing for people where um, my LGBTQ cartoons or whatever, um, hopefully create empathy in some people. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there, there's a quote that I love by GK Chesterton. And he says, we are all in the same boat in a stormy sea and we owe each other a terrible loyalty. Mm. Love it. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's what I think about too, is like in the sense of like, we are all in the same boat in a stormy sea. Yeah. And we owe each other a loyalty to each other. Like let's look out for each other. Let's love each other. Like, you know, and it's, it's, you know, a lot of your cartoons, it's interesting because, you'll have these things of Jesus and either congregants or just one person. And it's like, love everybody, like everybody. Are you sure? You know, like <laughs> yeah. love everybody or like, are you, are you for reals? And that's such a, it's such a tough thing for a lot of people to grasp because there's so many conditions. Yeah. I just, uh, and, and hoops that people got to jump through. I just love that you chose and it's just hitting me now, but that you chose to draw lambs yeah. you have a black lamb you have a rainbow lamb yeah what appears, it looks like a cotton candy lamb i don't know what that other but it's like there is okay okay cotton candy lamb. <laughs> that's what it looks like when i see it <laughs> then you got yeah, happy and really pizza much. and then it, and then i love that you have a dark jesus like yeah. it's so I like I saw this and then and the more I stare at it, I'm like, oh, man, it just gets deeper. Yeah, my rainbow sheep and my trans sheep. And even the other day I did a non-binary sheep and et cetera. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, but yeah, this would be an awesome T-shirt. Got to be honest. It's on a T-shirt. Is it? Yeah. What the hell? I'm going to have to go to your link as soon as. As soon as we're done, I'm gonna go with your link and cops and stuff. Cause I was telling Ann's, I was like, I need we need some art in our yeah. house, but we need art that we like moves us. Like I don't, yeah. I don't want to just put up I anything. Some. Yeah, I, I I really want to dive into that. Um, yeah. so how how down was your wife and 
all of this? Because was your was your wife raised in the church? Tell her to do. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) Was she like saved longer than you, or was she just like not like what was? Oh man, we've been together for so long. She was 18 when we met. She was 19 when we got married. I was 21. Wow. Like we. Wow. In May, we're going to be married 43 years. Wow. Well, we've been together our whole freaking lives and um, really walked side by side through all this stuff. And, you know, we went through some theological deconstruction together, you know, um, but we talk all the time. We talk a lot, um, communicate ingredient number one in a good relationship. Right. And um, it was when we left the church that, we we hit a wall like that was really really tough because our whole world blew up it was like a perfect storm and um she went to university 48 years old and started her nursing degree oh and um graduated you know four years later uh as a nurse and um i was doing my thing we had totally different lives separate lives Uh, we'd come home together but yeah, it took us a couple of years to find our balance again, but it was it was hard. And in fact, I wrote a book about it called "Till Doubt Do Us Part: When Changing Beliefs Change Your Marriage." Because I see so many people who go through deconstruction, and I see their marriages blow up. Um, some justifiably, and others, it's heartbreaking. And so, I wanted to write a book to help people th- navigate through that. Man, that's the second book you mentioned. I don't know why I didn't know that you were an author because I'm I was looking. That's I got too much going on, man. That's I, I, till death do us part. That's what it's called. Or yeah. till doubt do us part. And then the other one had a clever name too. What was the first one that you mentioned? Questions are the answers. Questions are the answers. Mm. Man, I want that on a t-shirt too. Don't tell me. It is on a t-shirt. It is on a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm getting that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna go broke at your website. You know what my most popular t-shirt is right now? What? Love over verses. Ooh. Uh, a, I did a cartoon where uh, a white sheep is complaining to Jesus because Jesus is hugging a rainbow sheep. And the white sheep is saying, but what about the verses? And Jesus says, love over verses. Wow. So, uh, yeah, so many people love that, that I put it on a t-shirt. But, yeah, fun. Dude, that's so dope, man. You're you're doing something really, I am so with it. I'm sad that I had to find out about you, like, recently. And B, I didn't even know you was following them for so long. What the heck? Yeah. I didn't I'm, know I'm, I'm pretty. I'm, what's that? Am I following you back? I don't know. I'll uh I'll send I'll send you a message on here. Okay. Um I love I, that. Uh, yeah, dude, Manny, I've uh I've sent you, I think, a couple of the cartoons, or maybe I just sent Ange. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I sent you. And it's like one of those things like everyone has group threads or probably like Instagram group threads where there's so much content that's shared that you only actually get to interact with like one out of every 10 pictures that's actually sent. Yeah, we have that. So it's probably it was it was uh, was probably one of those things. Dude, I'm so like I've got so much going on because I I'm on all the platforms. I'm on uh, Instagram, that's probably my most successful platform. I'm, I think I'm going to pass 120 this weekend, 1,000. That's awesome. Um, but uh, I'm on TikTok, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on uh, fan page Facebook, I'm on YouTube, I've got an email, you know, and I've written books, I've got my cartoons, I've got my paintings, I've got courses, I've got so much stuff. I just, you know, it's impossible to keep up with myself. So I don't expect other people to keep up with me either. So well, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link down in the description so that people can find you and all these things. And cool. um for sure I'm gonna pick up some. This is stuff. my latest book, by the way. Flip it like, like this. I love it. I love yeah. do you self-publish? This isn't self-published. Uh, I've got ten books, two aren't self-published. This is a real publisher. This is my best of cartoons. So if, oh. And it's like 19 something dollars down there. And uh, people are having a lot of fun with it, sending it to their ex-pastors or <laughs> leaving it at their in-laws. 
<laughs> leaving in the bathroom. <laughs> it's all yeah. your cartoons? Oh, I got to get that. No, my best ofs. There's oh, only okay. like 130 in here. I have over, I have 4,500 cartoons, man. Oh, sheesh. So, you know. Jeez. I'm going to, I'm going to. One day I'll be really famous. It's like Lizzo who, yeah. she recorded 223 songs before she got famous. Mm. So uh, I'm putting in the work. Yeah, man. Well, <laughs> we, we appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for making time and hanging out with us really means a lot a lot of fun yeah Yeah. man uh like we like i said we'll put your links and all the stuff you guys make sure to go follow them and uh hit them up let them know what you thought about this episode that would mean the world we appreciate you and like we always say we pray you find a seat at the table but if you don't you're always welcome at ours cheers